not every gay landmark gets recognized by a marker, and even those that do don't necessarily get our attention in our daily lives. We walk past them and don't understand the importance or significance. So I'm pleased that the Gay Rub helps give more attention to these markers and that they're collected and displayed all in one location where people can really take them in. Um, I hope I have talent, yeah. but yeah, I, I do and multiple that. things. I'm in hopes that I do them with talent. Uh, but yeah, one of my projects I'm currently working on is the Gay Rub. Now, when I got the email saying, all right, here's just information about the guest. I mean, I see like the Gay Rub. I mean, certainly it's a very, I guess like a salacious name with a lot of different meanings there. So it's, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, certainly when you read just the, the name itself, you're like, yeah, or you have a lot of things flying through your head. Was that a deliberate choice? Like I wanted to uh, get in a very evocative sort of name? Yes, it was definitely purposefully evocative. Um, rub, there are a lot of uh, definitions and connotations to the word rub. It could mean um, social friction, for instance, like um, he got a lot of rub for that. It can also mean the truth, as in that's the rub. It. Um, also uh, could mean, you know, sexual friction, and uh, it can also mean rubbings, which this is what it qualifies, for. you know, this is uh, the meaning. And so yeah, it was purposeful. Uh, I feel like as queer people, we do experience a lot of social friction. I think that this project is documenting a gay truth, and, um, and you know, of course there's an element of sexuality to being gay, so yeah, it was, uh, I love the title and I love that it gets so much attention. It's memorable. Yeah. So now, what, what came first? Was it the idea of doing this project or like did that title, but the name pop in your head? Like, no, uh, no, the idea of the project. I actually live in West Hollywood and about a mile and a half from my home is the first plaque for transgender victims of hate crimes. And I found out it was the first in the world and that just stuck with me and I kept thinking about it and thought about is it the only one in the world and what do the others look like and how many plaques do we have you know these public commemorative markers honoring you know victims of hate crimes what do they look like and I thought just right away like it would be interesting to do rubbings of them and then collect them all and show them at one point in time now, I do, the exhibit that you're showing now is about 100 or so of rubbings here? About 150 now. 150 yeah. now. Now, how much of those have you done personally, and how much it is that people have learned about the project and gone out and done them themselves and sent them to you? It is participatory, so I ask people to do that. And at first, it was, you know, when it was just a concept and it hadn't shown at you know, universities or institutions, I was essentially just begging friends when they went on vacation. I'd be like, oh, you're going to Paris. Do you know what's there? And I would give them rubbing supplies and um, ask them to take time out of their like honeymoon or their vacation to do a rubbing. And um, so that's how it started. But now I have people submitting rubbings who I'm not even familiar with. I had a friend ask his cousin to do a rubbing, and she did a great rubbing. So yeah, it's a lot of people that I'm not familiar with as well. Now, for uh, for the art of rubbing, is there a, a, a technique, a best way to, to get the best results out of a rubbing? Because I'm thinking, if you're sending, asking friends that maybe aren't have any experience with it, are you giving them a moment to like, let me instruct you the best way to do a rubbing, you gotta do it like this, or is it pretty easy to do? In terms of experience, I didn't even, I mean, though I had this idea of like doing rubbings, the last time I did a rubbing was in the sixth grade. So, I mean, the fact that I came up with this idea five years ago, it's over 25 years, it had been since I did a rubbing, but I remember the experience. There's something really tactile about it. And most of us in kindergarten, we did our first rubbings with leaves. I don't know if you like have that yes. exercise about like getting a leaf and putting a piece of paper on mm -hmm. top of it and, and getting a crane. And that, so people are familiar with rubbings. There were also those, um, remember those fashion plates as a child where you yeah. would like put yeah. different yeah. plates yeah. down? Yeah. So I think that you know our generation is familiar mm -hmm. with rubbings in an odd way. And, 
you know, so there people have some experience doing it. It's also very easy to do. The supplies, the materials are purposefully easy to access. So the fabric that I use, and I use fabric instead of paper because paper creases and it can tear easily. The fabric that I use is called a uh, Pelion or tearaway fabric that I get um, in large quantities. Um, and then the instead of using charcoal that people would normally use or graphite, I use wax. So basically I use crayons. And because it's easy for people to find a crayon anywhere, but to go to an art store, that's asking a lot. Right. 